What's going out there, chat? How we doing? Welcome back, of course, to Start Swing Trade, where you get your swing trade ideas. And of course, might find a trade or two live here, baby. We'll see what happens right now. I am still in a trade right now from the Moomoo account from this morning. So we'll keep up with that. I'll talk all about my swing trades right now. One deep into the green uh, today that I took. So Find out, team. There's a lot going on. Let's get into it. Let's take a look at what's going on in the market today. Uh, first stock that we will look at, let's just look at the S&P 500. Look at that breakout that we have right there. Big move towards 428. And I was talking about this just yesterday. I was like, hey, man, I'm looking for the 430s. I was like, man, I don't think we could run to 430 that quickly, but... Wouldn't you know it? It could maybe be one day that we get there towards the 430. This is what we call expansion move higher. And I was talking about this when we did the golden cross. Ever since then, where we get a pullback and then the expansion move. This is it, team. This is now trying to get there. It's deep into the bull market now from the bottom of the market. Now we're up about 22, 23%. So not looking too bad here as the spy goes higher. The only question is, will we run into some resistance there? That's when I think that eventually we might fun, uh, run into some exuberance on the over side, on the upside. But hey, let's take a look at what's been going on. Of course, I've been having a couple of these uh, swing trades for quite a while now, right? Let's talk about it. NCLH, Norwegian Cruise Line got up to 1616 today. Look at that move now really breaking out of the area that we were in, this con type uh, sideways consolidation, wrote it out. Now it got there to 16, and now we're into that space. I'm going to look for a move into that resistance line, uh, the trend line, into like the 17s. I will take a majority of the profits there and then maybe leave a little bit for a runner. Let's go to ARKK today. Nice day there. Now I'm up about 6.58%. And we're seeing some good names in, in that space today. Let's take a look at what had a really good day there. What didn't? Well, NTLA having a decent day. Pack B, Diagnostics Research. Tesla up to the 215s. We talked about 214s. Would we go to that level? Look at that takeoff. Not a bad move there from Tesla. It's really gotten strength in the last couple of days. Beam bouncing off the bottom. And Square, a swing trade that we just took yesterday. There you guys see it. 6133s was the entry yesterday. It might have seemed like not the best entry. But look at the move. Big move here. Six. I'm up on Square already 4.3%. Uh, not looking too bad. And we'll, we'll see. This one actually could keep going. And I was looking at this one today also with PayPal today. Really made a big trading mistake that I'll talk about just coming up. So stick around. Smash the like for that. It's good to see you guys in the chat out there. Smash the like. How you guys doing? All right. So PayPal also coming out of this zone. I'm going to keep on watch because I, I think this is definitely stocks that we can start seeing getting a nice little lift. Stocks that have gone sideways. I will be looking at. And I did take my new trade, of course of the day i can go into a couple more of the swings that i have on i have a total of seven on right now i did add to lazr on the pullback this one hasn't had the biggest day but i'll leave it alone and i did not add to intel today i'm giving it a chance to see if it comes down even closer towards this 30 dollars spot or closer towards like 30 65 30 50 but i'm still in a nice position there 31 35 i'm a little bit down on the day I will look to see if Intel can take that next step up. I really like this position. I just want to build in it slowly and not get too happy too quickly. All right, we'll see what happens there on Mara, of course, to see if this can go higher. I did add to this stock. I have an average 995 today. I added at 995. Now looking for this to get really above 10 and then hold it. If we're going to get breakouts like this in tech, I'm expecting to see at some point a what a rally in Bitcoin, of course, because it's so correlated with the NASDAQ. Will that take a nice leap higher and all of a sudden Mara move higher? Well, I don't want to miss that move. I like the daily chart here. I'm getting after it. The only question is, 
will you, right? Like always, we'll see what happens. This is my type of play here. I love that sideways consolidation, especially if we can start having a daily candle where we close above into the 11 space. We'll be looking pretty good. All right, we'll see what happens there on Mara. Smash the like. What's going on out there, chat? How we doing? It's good to see you guys. Jay, Helene, Florida, Florida. What's up? You're getting boil? Man, you're talking about the band stock that is boil? Man, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Florida, Florida. Am I going to be able to keep you in here, man? Nah, I'm just playing with you. But we'll see what happens there in boil, right? It doesn't seem like it... It, every time it seems like it reverses, it it comes down a little lower. I mean, this has been a complete disaster in natural gas. Maybe at some point it turns around. I'm just not going to call the bottom anymore. All right. And you were right on the IWM. At least somebody remembers that I was talking about IWM. And guess what I did? I went long IWM, baby. I got it a little late. I'm not going to lie. I, I was looking for this to take off. We were talking about this yesterday. I've had these drawn from a while back. You know, I actually created these. These were actually for the book club. These were created on 528. I could see that bottoming action. You know, it tells you right there. Boom, created 528. We'll see what happens. It is pushing higher. I got it today. I chased a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I had 179.83, and you can tell. That's a little bit higher than I wanted. I wanted it closer towards 175 or 178. I missed some of the move, but I said, you know what? I just want a piece right now. And if I get any pullback below, I'm going to be looking to add on this position because as long as the market can stay strong, I can see IWM really start working it. And then this means also what? That we could see some of the smaller names start getting a lift. Um, today, I'm seeing some stocks getting a lift in the IWM, Kuro, um, and I'm just naming these. I, I don't know if they're big moves or not. Kala, look at this biotech setting up. This one looks interesting there. So I'm going to keep watch KOD even making moves. Oh my God. When KOD is moving, you know, it's all good. Uh, Kodak, Kodiak science is, uh, getting a lift. And this is just one of those stocks that, you know, retail all knows out there. All right, let's keep going. We'll see what else is going on out there. Impressive moves across the board today. I would agree with that, Walter. We'll take a look at that. Anything that really impressed you, Walter? Let me know in the chat. Christopher asking about VCon here, saying that at VCon, did people show interest in decentralized storage? Um, yeah, I, I think that's a very important aspect, Christopher. Um, you know, one of the things that we do here is talk about different themes, right? You know, I'm very theme focused in my investing. And one of the things that I think is very important is trying to understand um, where AI and maybe the data behind AI is, is going, right? I think this is also very important, right? Decentralized storage, you know, where is this data coming from? Is it accurate? I've talked about different things, like maybe um, what was talked about at VCon a lot was blockchain and AI somewhat coming together and merging, right? Blockchain using it as a way to validate AI could be something that could be used in the future. And one of the most important thing is, right, where your storage is, right? Where is that data? This is one of the biggest and most important things of the future. And I think that this is going to be a battle. But things like decentralized storage, I think, are definitely important. The only question is, which is the best, right? You mentioned two here. I'm not going to tell you which one's better. I'm no expert at that, Christopher. But I can tell you, I'll start asking and seeing what we can find. All right, let's keep going. We'll see what else is going on. How we doing, Raz? Yeah, I'm sorry, a little late. Got it started a little late, but hey, Raz, I'm glad you made it, my friend. How was your day? Let me know. Any good trades today? Uh, Michael, AI C3, why is it down with the market up? Well, the truth is, is that they came out with their earnings. They're pulling back. It doesn't mean that it completely is broken. No, um, if you guys remember it, I was shorting it uh, earlier this week. I was looking for a bigger breakdown. And when the earnings came down, it did come down. Today, it came down even lower. And I think that this is one thing that you got to start looking for. At some point, the AI hype is just going to get too much for C3 AI. And it did give some decent numbers, but now you're seeing it. It's pulling back. And what will happen maybe is the attention goes somewhere else, maybe to another AI stock. Like CXAI, who knows? Maybe this one's the one that starts getting rampant. Uh, you know, one thing that I look for all the time, and I do this on the daily chart, is when I have like a trend line like this, I'll extend it a little bit further. You see, I already drawn this. I drew, created it on the May 2nd. 
and I updated it on the 22nd. Let's update it today and pull it just further. Watch how the action kind of lines up here for what? What I call the throwback look where you make an explosion above a trend line, you pull back and try to recollect and take the next run. So CXAI, you know what? Could be on our radar, especially for like this undercut 10 and then recovering a 10 move where you went down to 939 and now can make a recovery of 10. I'm going to keep it on watch. We'll see what happens next week. But if AI comes out of favor, maybe another AI name starts taking that lead, right? We'll see what happens. VIX hasn't had a 14 handle in years. Yeah, that also shows us what type of market we're in. All right, let's keep going. I got you, Christopher. That's what it's all about, man. Let's take a look at what else did. Did you add more intel? No, I talked about it, Steve. I did not add more intel. I was thinking about it today. Um, it did get into kind of 3083s. I have 3130s. I want to add, but I want to add closer towards this trend line. You guys see it drawn here. That's closer towards kind of like the 3050 area. So if I get a pullback down there, I can take a look at it. Um, and where am I getting this trend line? Same thing that I kind of did for the, the daily outlook, right? Um, you could do this also on like kind of the weekly outlook. That's where I kind of got it a little bit higher. And that's why you can see it a little bit higher. But I'm looking for pullbacks close to there to bounce off of that and come right back through the daily highs. Of course, that daily high that we're looking for is 32.29. So that doesn't look too bad. As long as it can reload and then get that next drive, I think Intel will be looking good. All right, let's keep going. We'll see what else is going on. Did How do you see snow, Mitch? I like that outlook. Let's get into some of the ARKK names. I got no problem with that. Of course, I have ARKK, and that's been a hell of a move. And I just got to keep riding this one out. This is one of those names that I don't even like to look at the profit because if I look at that, then I'll run to it. But instead, I need to let the trade work. I was looking for a longer term, bigger return. Let's see if I can get it. Let's go to some of these names. You're, you're, you're go ahead and you're naming Snow. Snow is a perfect growth name that would come back after a move like this. Zscaler kind of helped it today too, right? You saw Zscaler with some good news. And then you saw the worst of breed in cybersecurity, which is more Sentinel-1. This is one I want no part of. But you can look at different names here. You can look at Snow. You can look at CrowdStrike. You can see how that's got a nice little pullback to 150. That doesn't look too bad. Pan W is already taken off. We were talking about this one for a 200 move. It's up there to 217, got to 220 today. So definitely, can I see snow making a, a move higher? Yeah. And one thing that this one did is a little bit of an undercut move and then kind of rallied through it. We, we like to see this trend line hold a little bit cleaner, but it did pull back and got another lift right back. And what matters more to me now is that this weekly candle might engulf the prior week's candle. So this is very important. If we can get a close where it gets up there to the 180s for this week, well, there you go. Now you have that bullish engulfing look. Let's see if it can even get to 177. Because you see how it tried to get to 180 there, and it didn't close up there. But it's setting up for that next drive higher. Now the only question is, can it reload? maybe 170s, get through that 180 and keep pushing. I'll keep watch on this one. This is not one that I have right now, but definitely one that I keep an eye out for. Even Roku, I've talked about this. This looks good for me in ARKK. Why? Just because of the technicals. I, I'm really not the biggest fan of Roku in the story, but this looks a little bit like head and shoulders. Nice little pop, faded. Now you're getting some volume to come back into it and it's starting to get strong here. Nice little day there for Roku. I'd keep an eye on even Zoom. Zoom could even get a little bit of a lift. This one's a little bit less of a move right now. I'd keep watch on it, if it especially if it gets above 70. Um, but I'm looking at Unity. That was one that we talked about yesterday. And what does it do today? The same pattern it's done in the last three days, which is pop, pull back, and then get the lift. Pop, look, pop, pull back, get the lift. Pop, pull back. Get the lift. Pop, pull back, get the lift. This is exactly, the stock just keeps repeating it. This morning, what does the stock do out the gates, right? If you focus on that first action, and this is where you can get trapped, right? You get the pop, you get the pullback, and then followed by the lift. It isn't that hard right now, but the key is just understanding that, looking for patterns like that. That's what's going to go ahead and get you the return that you guys are looking for, right? 
If we're all going to find stocks like this and get that next level, we need to be paying attention. And this is why you sometimes hear some traders say that they only trade like one or two names or maybe five names. This is why it's important to also look for what? Patterns and look for patterns to continue repeating. And if you can find that, well, you see it's been working pretty well there for Unity. All right, let's keep going. We can take a look outside of growth and ARKK names. I see you guys mentioning CAT. Industrials definitely had a good day. So let's do what? Let's go into what was hot and what was not today. All right, so industrials actually leading the upside action move. Let's talk about what happened here because there's some big names that got some big moves. So we'll talk all about it in the sector first, and then we'll go to industries overall. There's some names like names that you might not hear of, right? And some bigger ones. SFWL. Look at this one. It's a trucking stock. It actually has a uh, capitalization here of $830 million. So this is a bigger stock that's been recently kind of opened up. And you can see it's making waves. So I kind of want to keep this one on my radar. Um, this is not one that I, you know, knew too much before. So I can just quickly draw and I can see the 10, of course, acting as resistance, support around 880s or nine. And now trying to get back through 10 today, it did make a little move, pulled back. Let's see what happens to this trucking stock. Who knows? I'm going to send an alert. I'll keep it on watch. DSKE, another trucking stock. Hmm. Big moves there. So we got to keep a watch on some of these moves to see which ones we want to kind of keep an eye on. But that just shows me overall, I need to keep an eye on trucking. Hmm. ODFL starting to get a little bit of a lift. Can I be finding a little bit of a, a theme play here? This is what I like to do, theme, uh, team. This is what it's all about, right? Because I can see here, okay, this looks like it wants to come right back up into this space. Has really started to get going. Is there anywhere else that I can maybe catch maybe a little bit of some pullback action move, right? I can look for that action there and I can't blame it. Let's go to kind of a, a higher RSI and see which ones of these are already taken off. PTSI, look at this one. They all have a very similar kind of long-term trend line that they're coming back on. So this is something that I definitely keep a watch on to see if these can really start lifting. MRTN, another one that I'd probably put on the radar. Nice looking chart there, especially on the weeklies. We'll see what happens. And, and Jay says, Sitlicals, just playing catch up. And I kind of agree with that. It could be definitely that, right? Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, cyclical moves are out of sync, so need to be really careful. We'll see. But this is something that I'll definitely look to see if it continues, right? So trucking starting to get strong. Look at this on the daily. This is the, the, sec, uh, the industry overall in, in, in industrials. Um, but we can also take a look somewhere else, right? Farm and heavy construction. You guys already mentioned it. Of course, cat having a decent day today. Nice little push higher. Deer having a nice little push higher. And I was I was wondering, would we get that kind of lift? I even drew this a little while ago. And you can see I was a little bit early, but it started to get that nice push. So that's where we can start seeing these stocks, what? Just trying to catch a little bit of a turn, especially since the markets is getting so strong. Seems like some rotation came right back in these names. Picard also. Look at that move right back to the upside. So could these stocks keep going? I, I mean, they could. L look at this. Look at Okosh. Look at that. OSK. Big move there. Not too bad. 4% Tex. 5% move. Hmm. So we'll see if these can continue moving, right? One space that I'm going to be scared to look at that I really wanted was what? The airlines, of course, I talked about this yesterday. Would I take my shot back in the airlines? I thought I should, and I clearly am missing out now. Look at UAL, right back to the highs there. AAL, this one still not really taking off, so maybe I still got a chance to partake in this. But I had it down at 14, and I sold these a little bit too early maybe, and now they're starting to take off. The airlines look pretty good. Cruise lines, Let's see if those can keep pushing. CCL sold that one a little early too. So I had a really good kind of basket there. Just sometimes you sell early and this is why it's important to try to stick to what? Our objective planning. All right. Energy also having a decent day today. And of course, OPEC meeting uh, throughout the weekend. So I talked about, would we get a move to like 107? 
and then a fade right back down. This is what could happen. I'll tell you right now, oil is the scary game to trade, team, because OPEC is going to do this, what, on the weekend. What are we going to be able to do? We can maybe go to the futures and react there, but other than that, you get screwed in these types of plays. So will OPEC come and cut production, and then all of a sudden we see crude price jump up? We'll have to wait and find out on Monday, of course, and throughout the weekend when they announce it. But the truth is, is that you can get, you know, it's kind of binary now. What what do I do? Do I short XOM here? You don't know what's going to happen unless you got some insight in OPEC and then just let me know, right? All right, let's keep going. We'll see what else is going on. Uh, XOM definitely getting a little bit of a bounce. That's energy. Financial services getting a little bit of a lift. Who thought financial services were going to get a lift? Just the other day, we were like starting to see KRE come down. And then look, look what happens. Boom. Big day. Now we're starting to get through these levels. I created this on April 10th. That's how long we've been like kind of just expanding this line and just looking to see when are we get through that. Well, there you guys have it. There's your sign of of real strength in the regional banks. So this is the, the time that I would call that if you're looking at regional banks to go long, well, this, this might have been the day to start really kind of getting in. At least for me, I can start feeling a little bit more confident when I see a move like that in the KRE and I start taking a look at some bigger bank names and I can see JPM right back to the upside. I can see Bank of America catching another bounce, right? And then coming back, after all this action, now being able to shake this, this actually might not look too bad for an opportunity now. So I would even be looking at these, especially if we can keep riding higher. All right, cat, the cat, the hat might keep going too. The key there is what will happen around the 240s. That's the area that I'd be kind of watching. You can see kind of how the weekly loves to kind of catch a little bit of some push. But I could see this kind of coming into play where the 240s act a little bit as resistance and maybe even before that 230s. But 240s would be the next stop on some on like kind of day two, day three action. We'll see if it's able to make that. You can see 230 right there is going to act as two, as a little bit of resistance here um, around 229s. Let's see if it gets through there and starts making its way to 240. All right, uh, LV Group. At Mitch, all your picks are overvalued. AITX for nice momentum. Hmm, let's take a look. What do you got for me? All right, so you got a, a little bit of some AI outlook. I mean, the name is good. The volume is good. But holy crap, man, nine cents, dude. <laughs> I can't blame you, though, because you could maybe grab like a million shares, right? And then if it goes up a certain amount, you can make a couple mil. Hey. Shout out to you if you can do that. I, I can't trade these. I'll tell you that much. All right, man, watch for the AI bounce. We'll see if AI gets the bounce. I wanted to recover the 9 EMA. 9 EMA is around 32.73. All right, we'll get hit today. Well, to tell you the truth, nothing from the open is really down. Communication services even bouncing back after really getting wrecked this morning. T-Mobile got wrecked this especially on the Amazon mention that they'd get into wireless, also AT&T and Verizon. But these stocks kind of came back a little bit. It would seem to me like a little bit more of a relief rally um, after really getting crushed. But this is not really kind of holding on. You can see how this turned around. So this is not looking good if it can't get back above that trend line. All right, I need to check in with one of my trades here, guys. I has, still have MP materials um, from this morning. I got this stock at 2165. Um, this is the Minamumu account, the small account challenge that I've been doing in live trading. Um, trying to see if this can go higher here. It's had multiple attempts to get towards like the 2220s. Uh, That's where I really wanted to take some profits a little bit above the 20s. Let's see if I can get a little bit of a push here towards the close and take my money and run. If not, I might actually swing this. The only problem is. I like to swing a little bit when I'm deeper into the green, but hey, who knows? Maybe I just take a shot or maybe I take some profit and look to let this work. But this is kind of reversing a little bit. But the only thing is, do I really trust metals and minerals? Let's take a look. I, I was looking at it earlier, right? PLL, really nice move today in lithium, right? Look at this move. Nice little push higher towards like 62. If you take a look at SQM, 
I love how this one did a little bit of a pullback action today and then caught the lift again. We'll see what happens on this one. ALB. This one's been pushing kind of all day, now pulling back a little bit, but really nice day there for ALB starting to get going. I take a look at LTHM. That one looks good. That one's starting to push. And then LAC. Earlier, I was looking for a move above kind of like this uh, 21, 20, uh, 24 area. And you got a little move. It went up to the 2140s, but not as strong as some of the other players. Now the only question is, is now the time? Well, I'm holding it right now. I'm trying to see if maybe I can get a little bit of a rip towards the close and I'll just take it for a day trade. But if not, who knows? Might, might take a swing on that. All right, let's see what else is going on. Let's get to some other names. ATVI being mentioned in the chat. I've been seeing this kind of work its way back. Yes, this could probably come right back towards that 85. Um, I think it's kind of more of your arbitrage style trade. So I'll just keep it to the sideline. It's not something that I'd be trading here. But hey, just ask the arbitrage expert. Ask Dennis. I'm sure he'll know how to trade it. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at some other spaces here. Healthcare. Also bouncing back and bouncing back rather quickly. Let's take a look at what had a good day there. Medical care names having a decent day there. Healthcare plans really starting to come back. Two days in a row, now three days in a row with a nice little push. ELV is one that I like. Elvian's Health. Now that's getting a little bit of a push back and it's starting to push above the 460s. CVS falls in that space too. Look how this is turning around. This one doesn't look too bad as it starts to come back towards the 75. And keep your eyes on some other ones, right? Johnson & Johnson recently had a big move and then came right back to 155. Now starting to get the bounce. Merck getting that little bit of a bounce. But I think this is also just a matter of the market just completely kind of ripping towards the upside. I mean, we got the 428 today. I don't think anybody thought we were going to 428 today. But definitely smash the like. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other action. And of course, uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it all the way to four o'clock today, but I, I got you guys. I'll stick around as much as I can. I'm just trying to keep focused on th that trading action there, see if I can cash in on MP. And I will let you guys know about my mistake that I made today. Let's get into that. And then I can go ahead and talk about some other trading action, some themes that I'll be looking for and what to look out for for next week. Yes, smash the like for that. If you guys want to hear about what's going on next week, hit the like. All right, let's get into my my mistake of the day, of course. And this was what? Well, the truth is, is that I do a lot of things here, right? I, a lot of times uh, when I'm running kind of my live trading show, what am I doing? Well, I'm running kind of the layouts. I'm running also getting on uh, helping like Ryan and, and Zunaid control the layouts. I'm having all different platforms open, doing some swing trading, doing some day trading, doing some moo moo small account challenge. Right. And so today was one of those days that it hasn't been, I haven't done this mistake in like four years and it's, it's tough, right? I'll, I'll be as honest as I can be. Um, it was one of those days where I'm just like, come on, man, you telling me you did that one. Like, you really did that mistake? Well, what was that mistake? That mistake was buying the wrong stock, of course, not what you want to be doing. Um, and I intended to get into a different stock, of course. I had that stock up, pulled up on the chart in front of me, pulled up on the chart to the right-hand side, but of course, <laughs> end up having a different stock on the top-hand side. And what do I do? Boom. I instantly try to get into a play on the, on the quick side. And don't realize that I'm buying a completely different stock for a big amount of volume because normally I wouldn't be taking that sizing into that kind of play. And I was looking at that play, but it was more for a lot smaller position, let's say a tenth of that position maybe. And it really just kind of cut down really quickly. Um, and I tried to kind of get out at that moment, wasn't able to kind of get out at that moment. So instead I tried to manage the trade and just, it just cost me a lot, right? On the profit, of course, this is on the prop account that we've been talking about trade the pool. Um, so I did take a major hit today. I want to show you guys that. So I'm going to log in to trade the pool and pull it up for you guys and, and, and full the transparency, right? This is what it's all about guys. Um, uh, Mr. DeSoto saying I bought the wrong stock in the wrong account one time. Hey, 
it happens to us all, right? I mean, sometimes you're going to win some, sometimes you're going to lose some, right? Um, but yeah, multitasking is, is something that you might not want to do too much when you're doing too much day trading. Uh, but yeah, this is instantly how you kind of ruin uh, a big trade there and just getting crushed today, guys. Uh, at least I was able to manage uh, the kind of the daily uh, goal because you can't lose like 700, but I was up a decent amount, man. Uh, I'll show you guys that right now. Let me put it full screen here. Uh, but here you guys see it. So down about 670 today, lost on that D dog. And you can see it here. Uh, I, 200. I, I don't buy 200 or sell 200 of D dog anytime, but that's how it goes. Sometimes, sometimes you make mistakes and it did cost me there. Um, but Hey, we're all going to learn from our mistakes, and that's what it's all about. I was up about 400 on this account, so I take a step back. I'm right back towards around 395. But, hey, just going to bounce back, keep battling. I still got 45 days for this account, stayed in the rules, and that's what matters today. And then I'll bounce back tomorrow and just keep battling. So you guys, I know, will be wrong with me. And sometimes you're going to win some, sometimes you're going to lose some. I'll tell you one thing. I haven't made that mistake in a long time, but it's going to be another thing to kind of learn from and just keep pushing forward. Um, I've talked to multiple traders and they've all told me, hey, it's happened to them before too. So, um, and I actually get talked to a trader that I know that's a really good trader that's even said, hey, it happens to me a couple of times a year. So uh, it's just how it goes, especially when you're trading multiple things, um, looking at the swing, looking at the the, the moo moo, the small account, then bouncing around. The big thing, maybe not be so quick, right? That was the thing. I wanted to get into what? I wanted to get into PayPal and I needed to get in now. That mentality might have cost me. Hey, we live and we learn. All right, let's go back to the stock trading action. Just wanted to give a little bit of a lesson today, but we can go in to the market, try to find some new plays, right? We'll find out uh marie uh saying that i did the same thing this morning but got lucky and sold it at a profit and the best part is marie i think i could have sold it at a profit i had a moment there to sell it as a profit but it wasn't that i i froze it was more that i was trying to get it in paypal i didn't get it and then i noticed i was not in it i was trying to get paypal and then maybe go back to that and then kind of handle that but then it just got kind of like in this whole little mix where i didn't even know what i had on there um, so I just had to make sure what had just happened. Pure uh, deer in headlights moment. Um, and then I just had to adjust after that. That's life, guys. And one thing that's for certain, I'm always transparent about it. I went on a lot of trades, but hey, this is one that's going to take a little bit of a hit. At least the swing trades were doing all great today. And I didn't open up too many um, to just trying to keep my mentality right, right? I took a hit today. You don't want to take two, three, four, five, six hits on a day like that, right? That's the important thing. Mitch, one less of Dutch, uh, one less cup of Dutch Bros. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. That's gonna have to be one less cup. You know how it is. Uh, Michael says, get get some rest, Mitch. You deserve it. Hey, trust me, that's probably what it is too. I, I haven't gotten much sleep the last two days. Maybe made a mistake because of that. But hey, we all got to learn from our mistakes and bring it here. Don't be afraid. We all are going to make mistakes. Tell each other about it. Because the truth is, how do you get better? Is by admitting your mistakes and becoming better at losing. I know it sounds crazy, but the better you are at losing, the more you'll find success in life. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at what else is going on as we start to get a little bit of a turnaround here towards the end. Let's see if I just take my profits here in MP because I wanted to see if the market could continue running we did get a little bit of a push here. So uh, we got a nice little push there to 2205s. I've just been riding this trend to see if we can get another little push here towards the close. You can see right here the, kind of the trend line that I would look at and kind of the support right underneath it. This is on the 15 minute. Let's see if we can get this to kind of make that next move up and really push towards the 1220s, especially here towards the close. I might just take the money and run uh, the small account challenge. Uh, this is still a decent win even right here where we're at. So I've just been trying to ride the trade. Just stay with the trend. We'll see what happens. All right, let's get into some other action. I can take a look around. I still got to keep an eye on it. So if I do get a little bit of a spike, I'll let you guys know and probably just take the money and run. 
All right, let's take a look at the IWM. How is that doing now? I know I have that. Is it coming back to reality? Oh, no. It's actually just pushing stronger. Uh, so there you go. You see it. IWM pretty strong today. Um, SPY pretty strong today, of course. Q's just have been on their own little world. I mean, to think that this is kind of having a sideways day on a day where the SPY kind of rips, that just shows me that things are kind of playing like catch up right now. But who knows? I, I, I can't can't say it, but... We might get up there towards like kind of that 370s before we turn around. I know I'm looking at the SPY 430s, but we're right there. It's been a hell of a day. Microsoft pushing now towards 335. Google towards uh, 125. The one that I really want to look at now is Amazon. I feel like this one, we've been talking about it since 100, and it's just taken off now. I think it's almost too high to get now. So I'm going to look to see what happens in the next couple of days. Shot pulling back a little bit here. This one's a little bit interesting for me, um, especially if it can kind of keep this line, even just like one more time, come down to that level, find that 57, come back towards 60, and this will be looking pretty decent. I'll keep shop on my radar for next week. All right, I'll keep pushing uh, IWM, not IWN. Uh, oh, there you go. A little bit different. Don't pull a Mitch, yeah. <laughs> Don't pull a Mitch. Don't go IWN. What is IWN compared to that? That's the value. Oh yeah, that's the value. We, we don't want value. We want we want growth, baby. What's the growth one? Is it IGN? No, it's not. I thought it, I thought it would be at least. That would make sense. But all right, let's keep going. Let's keep pushing. Laugh out loud. IWM sell or question? Ah, well, I can't tell you. I can tell you at least that I'm long on IWM. And it's pushing strong. I'll tell you that much. It's been a good been good move already. 1% up. So Intel, still not in the green on that one. That one's not doing the best. And we'll see about Mara. Mara's just getting into the green now towards the close. So doesn't look too bad now. Back above 1010. I just want to keep this one grinding higher. Really a close above like kind of towards 1025 would be pretty decent here. Visa was one that I looked at earlier today. How did this one turn out? It's such a nice chart. And I'll show you guys where I was looking at this. I don't want to even push too far because I really don't even know. But look how this one was kind of pulling back. Started going sideways off this 228 level. Right when I was coming off on uh, kind of our show, right, on live uh, trading is around 11. Right then, right here, I was looking at it. I was like, man, this looks pretty decent. Look at that nice little move there to uh, 229. Let's see if it kept going strong. Uh, it's just been kind of stair-stepping its way. It's been sideways here, not doing much. So it doesn't look too bad here, Visa. Didn't make a move back towards 229, but didn't get back there towards the 230s. And this is one that you know has just been trying to grind higher. I think this one could catch a little bit of a lift. MasterCard uh, MA. Let's take a look at that one. That one's also catching a little bit of a lift today. I think these trade uh, side by side. We'll see if they can take the next step up. Looks like this one's running close to resistance, right around above towards the 375, 26. Let's see if it can get towards the 380s. All right, let's keep going. I'll take a look here. Now I'm at the 2206 there, 4 MP. We'll see if I swing it. It's still looking good, just grinding higher. All right, let's take a look at what else is going. IWF is the growth one. There you go. That might be the one that we want a little bit more of. Some growth, baby. It's all about the growth now. Yeah, you can tell. That thing's taking off. Look how it catches the 9 EMA the last couple of pullbacks. It's pushing strong. That's for sure. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some stocks. Uh, DraftKings. Hmm, you think DraftKings keeps going next week? Well, it definitely didn't stop, right? I mean, this is pretty strong. Now, one thing I will mention is that you're going to get into sometimes a, a seasonable kind of drift in betting, right? Let's just be honest. In summer, there isn't as much betting as there is going into the NFL season. So I think at some point, you might get a little pullback opportunity to get DraftKings if you haven't already got it. Next stop for me is up to maybe like the 30s, but from there... I mean, I don't know if we're going to have enough strength to get to like the 35 in DraftKings. We'll find out, right? That'll be a big move. 
that'll recover a bigger time support that was over here in the past when it was at 70. But overall, still doesn't look too bad. And to think that this got down there to $12, it's not a bad stock to have gotten down that $12. I'll tell you that much. I don't see DraftKings disappearing anytime soon. They spend a crap ton of money. Yes, they'll keep spending money. They're trying to get customer acquisition. All right, let's see what else is going on. Let's take a look at what else, uh, what other stocks uh, have been pushing here. Pen, did Pen get a lift today? Ooh, even Pen getting started. This is a stock that hasn't moved at all in like how long? I mean, it's been it's been like two or three years now for Pen uh, from its high. Where we what are we talking now? We're talking two point two years, eighty one percent pullback. Will Pen ever? get moving. That's something that I'd keep on watch. All right, let's go to some cyclical area. This actually getting a little bit of a lift. We drew this out uh, just recently. Now this is starting to push. If the market keeps pushing, I look for areas where there's some high beta names that can push to the next level. A lot of the cyclicals hold a lot of high beta names. Doesn't mean that everything in there is high beta, but something that I keep an eye out for. Today, you definitely got some big push in department stores. Those push back. You got Macy's coming back, JWN, uh, DDS. Um, so my man, uh, Dennis Dick, was right on Macy's. I'll tell you one thing. I didn't want to touch retail stores, uh, department stores especially, and they get they did get a nice little lift today, a uh, nice little push higher. Look at that nice little push towards 1550 I hope he was able to nail that one in uh, Macy's. And we're talking Dennis Dick, of course, uh, from pre-market prep. Recreational vehicles even getting a little bit of a move up. You can see how this is kind of getting a little bit of a push. Hilton getting a nice little push. Marriott. It just seems to me like it was a little bit more of rotation, uh, switching on to names that hadn't gone yet, right? Starting to really get a push. Restaurants getting a little bit of a push. This is not an area that I think will continue too much strength, but you can definitely tell that, hey, they're coming in here. And if the market's going to keep riding higher, why not these stocks just ride higher? Even though they're, they're not some of the, you know, the biggest names, I think, you know, you can see it in RCL. Look at this kind of continuation. This is why I got into the cruise lines because I didn't want to miss them. And the airlines, I didn't want to miss those. I'm already missing those. So I'm going to keep watch to see what happens on that. But hey, uh, definitely for, the, for leisure, that's not looking too bad in the cyclicals as you start to see that push. Keep your eyes on different names. Booking, holdings, it's a more expensive name, but it's holding pretty well and could take another step up. Expedia, nice little push after being sideways for a long period, now recovering 100 today. You see, these are the type of stocks. And even Planet Fitness coming back a little bit today. And we were seeing how this stock was just completely destroyed. It came back pretty good today, went towards the low of 60.22, and now it's at 63.48s, 58s. Doesn't look too bad. All right, so uh, definitely MP struggling here at the 2209 area. So I'm going to keep an eye on that to see if that can take another step, but not much going on here. Let's go to the SPY. SPY kind of slowing down here towards the end. We might see a little bit of a pullback towards the VWAP. It's been strong all day. It's been kind of stuck in this channel as of late. Um, so you guys can see how there's multiple attempts to go up and down. Now it could break to the downside. We'll see what happens there on the SPY. If it comes back to the VWAP, for the close. All right. Uh, assuming the purple is VWAP, purple is uh, 200 moving average. So um, when I'm on the daily is when I kind of pay attention to it. Uh, VWAP for me is going to be orange. So the orange line, uh, my moving averages are as follows. Light blue is 9 EMA. Purple is 200 SMA. And then the, the yellow is also a, two, a 50 SMA moving average. The difference between exponential and simple moving average, the difference is only that it's kind of weighted in more of the recent data. And that's the important part there. Um, so like momentum for me is the nine EMA. That's why I want to use an exponential, but for like bigger, bigger timeframes, I want to use more simple and basic moving average. All right, let's keep going. We'll see what else is going on. Uh, what are your yellow cyan lines? There you go. I, I tried to explain everything there. I hope I was able to explain it well. No worries. Purple is a 200, 200 SMA. No worries. It's okay, Crassy. I, I know a lot of people use the uh, EMAs. 
Um, I like SMAs for 50 and the 200 because I don't need the recent data on those. Those are kind of telling me the long-term trends, right? The nine EMA is going to tell me the short trend. And that's what I want to look at. Some people use the 10. Some people use like the Keltner channel. And that's why they also use the 10 EMA. I like the nine because it's a part of the MACD. All right, let's go to Intel. What's up with Intel? It's at 3130s. Hmm. This one is just going to be a swing. I, I, I like this one. I, you know, I could add to this, but I already have a, a pretty decent size. Um, to put it in perspective, this is about half the sizing that I would want for a full position swing trade. So I could still add that half later if it comes back towards the 30s. But if it just takes off from here, I'm okay with just getting a piece. All right, let's keep pushing. We'll see what else is going on in the market now. Things are looking a lot better in Intel, at least. Uh, for the day, it's still up, and that's all that matters to me. LAZR is my only red swing position right now, and that's down to 674. I have an average of 685 on that one. All right, so I'm seeing MP just kind of sticking around, not doing much there. Um, it's just holding up. Um, it tried to make that move up there towards 22.10 and just failed. So if it breaks 22 here, I'm just going to get out. I'm going to adjust a, tr a uh, trade right quick. Let me just go ahead and adjust that. Have a stop set towards like the 83s. I was kind of trailing the action here. Um, so I'm just going to move it up here towards 21.98. And we'll do 96 on the stop limit. Boom. All right. Got that set up there. We'll see if I get stopped out on the pullback there. I got no problem getting stopped out on the pullback. Um, I could just get out here, but I'm going to give it a chance. If it just wants to come back towards that high, that recent high of 2209 and start closing up towards 2210, I'll swing it. But if it comes back, I'll just take the profits and run. I, I, you know, I'm not trying to push it too much on a day like today where I made some mistakes. All right, let's keep pushing. We'll see what else is going on. You guys smash the like, throw up some stocks that you guys want to look at now. It's about 348. We got 12 minutes left. Who's going to bring some good stocks to take a look at? Who, who thinks they got a nice setup they want me to uh, take a look at? All right, I'm going to play a quick little trailer, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, team. Stay right here. Smash the like. Introducing Portfolio Synchronization with your brokerage. Now you can securely connect your brokerage account to Benzinga Pro, opening a world of personalization. Screen lightning fast news just for the stocks you own. Set alerts for news catalysts that affect only the companies you care about. It's all possible with a simple click and a secure protective connection. Overcome uncertainty and connect your portfolio to Benzinga Pro today. All right, team, let's keep getting after it. Let's see what else I can come up with. Let's see. Um, hey, let's take a look, right? Underneath the hood is what we always want to be looking at. One thing I like to do all the time, and let me see if I have my scanner up here. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at some of the some bit of the strongest names in the S&P 500. Um, and then just start looking at those to see if they're playing a little catch up. So what I do with that is I can just look at the RSI, right? I want to see stocks that are just ripping towards the upside. So here you can see that Adobe is one of those. Uh, Adobe, one that, man, I'm going to be so upset that I, I called that for like a nice AI play, but didn't take the trade. And this is where it has to be like where, you know, you got to put your money where your mouth is because this was a good situation for sure. And Adobe's just taken off. They have this regenerative AI that looks really good. So does Adobe look great? Yes, I've talked about it. I would love a pullback to 400, but I mean, we're at 435 now and we were just at like 378. So it's been a big move there for a stock like Adobe. Uh, Meta, Meta is really pushing. Of course, they started talking about the Quest. Uh, the new Quest is going to be released. I think this could close the gap to 295. I talked about would we fill this gap and we created this on March 16th. Well, there you see it. It looks like it wants to come up for that gap. We'll see what happens there. Tesla continues making a move, right? Will it get back there towards the 233s? I think that that's where it can run into some resistance. It's running into it right now. So decent close on the day. It did, get, it did push past that. We'll see if it starts acting as support around here. 
and then makes the next level into the 220s. AVGO, of course, super strong move right back. I talked about this in pre-market uh, in our live trading that I wanted AVGO, that I would probably maybe take 790s, risk about 10 points. Look how this stock ripped higher. This stock going up there to 820s. It was a really nice move. It was a 27.42 move. Uh, it got to an extreme there, about like 31 points. And I would have probably got like maybe like 10 shares on that. But you can't be mad about that, right? I mean, you can't take a, the biggest position there because it's a little bit of a risky position, right? You could risk about you know 10 bucks on the downside, 10 points there. Um, but even that, that would have been a nice little profit, right? I mean, 30 points. That could definitely bring you a nice return on AVGO. Nice move there. And looks like it wants higher. Nice little setup on the daily for it to just come right back and push a little bit to the upside. ACN was one that we looked at. That's looking pretty strong. This looks like it wants to start really getting going. I keep this one on my radar. And I'm just going through kind of the stronger names. NCLH, of course, I have that. So I'm happy about RCL making a really big move to the upside. Match. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you guys, uh, what's going on in the match? You guys are uh, getting that uh, Tinder up game, I guess. Uh, it's summertime. I guess you guys are trying to go out because it looks like it. Looks like match really starting to get a little bit hotter as of late. NVIDIA is the one that's kind of just hanging around, not doing too much now. Um, and, of course, you can't blame it, right? AMD pulling back here on the day. It's a little bit interesting, right? You're not seeing AMD as strong as some of the other names. So are we starting to see a little bit of a pullback? Yeah, but does it mean they're broken? No, they could be going to the other areas, right? We had industrials lead today. We had energy lead today, financial services. It seemed to me like it was just an everything outside of all the tech names rally, but still technology still rallied. There was still some names that kept going higher. All right, match is one short from Mitch. Yeah, I always laugh about that. They, I used to call it my stock, but can't do it anymore, man. Uh, what else, what other ones you guys got out there? Do you like Fiverr? That's actually an interesting play, right? Upstart has really taken a nice little lift as of late and starting to pull back a little bit. This actually looks interesting. I, I, I love stocks that like do this where it makes a move hourly support. You know, you get that nice little push higher. Now you're getting this kind of little move here, multi-day hourly day where it's just going up, down, up, down, up, down. Now stole now holds that support as long as it's kind of holding that 29 uh 25 area looks still good here on upstart let's go to fiverr um that's fbrr right um this looks interesting too i would keep this one on my radar i know that it's gotten hit as of late and it's pulled back massively but i, I think in the long run you might see people still needing uh kind of you know uh, designers, things like that. This is not something that I would run away from. And to me, this looks like it's trying to reverse from the bottoming pattern here. Um, it did break through this, but this is what I call the undercut and rally. Um, I got this from Gil Morales and I've heard other people mention it. It's called the undercut and rally trade, right? Where you're getting a lot of volume on that other cut of support. Now you want to see if it just starts rallying right back. So I'll keep an eye out on that to see if it makes the move but you want to see increased volume into the move. And that's what I'm seeing right now. As the, as the stock came through the support, it increased some volume. Now, as the stock comes out, I actually got another increase of volume and this could really start getting going. And I know a lot of people are probably short this stock. And if they're short and this stock gets back there towards, let's say 30, you'll definitely probably have some shorts on the run. Something to keep watch for sure. So what I'll do is I'll actually just put a, an alert here around 2770s. Keep an eye on it, and I'll see if I can get a nice run on live trading. But do I like it? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I'm looking for stocks like that that are sleepy um, and then could get have like high short interest and all of a sudden get that short squeeze type move back to the upside. All right, let's keep going. I'll take a look at some other one. Uh, what's the stor uh, story with uh, Celsius? Well, Celsius Holdings, of course, you're talking energy drinks. And I do think that this is one of the most popular energy drinks now. I didn't believe in the story back when it was down at like 20. So I'm not going to say that I've been a Celsius Holdings fan all my life. You know what I mean? I actually saw these 
when they first came in to stores when I was a manager uh, back in the days at 7-Eleven and they didn't, they were, they weren't as hot. I can tell you, like I, I used to have like tracking of sales. So Celsius wasn't the hot energy drink. What changed it? They got the thinking that this is a healthy, a fit type of energy drink. So of course they have like, you know, like no preservatives, things like that, natural flavors and stuff like that. But the truth is, I mean, let's, let's be honest. It's not healthy, but they've gotten that uh, story into the retail, into the consumer's mind. And that's why it keeps pushing forward. Another thing is it sells like it, it just, it does. And I've been drinking them a little bit more, kind of checking them out to see how they work and, and they don't do bad. Um, they, they are going to be a little bit better for you than let's say like a bang energy drink. You know, if you compare that, what it, what it, uh, contains with like a Celsius holding drinks, but this is also part of the monster story, right? Look how monster wants to keep going higher, right? I mean, this could keep pushing strong. If monster stays strong, I think C E L H will also stay strong. Two of the most bought energy drinks and you see it, they're pushing. All right, let's keep going. What else is being mentioned in the chat? UAA in the chat. All right, I'll take a look at Under Armour action. Uh, I I mean, Under Armour is something that I think, you know, it's going to be around, but is it going to kill it like they expected it to? No, I mean, there was at one point where Under Armour was really thinking that it was going to come and try to, you know, like really compete with Nike. Now, is this a, a, a potential opportunity? Maybe, but it needs to hold support. There's like this bigger support right underneath it here. And you can see it from back in 2020s, uh, the support there, 715, 739. So I'm going to say, I'm going to round it to $7. Right now it needs to hold seven. If it can hold seven, you're looking good. If it breaks seven, I want the hell out of this stock. So at least you know you're out. That's all you need a lot of the time for trading is just knowing where your out level is. Now it's back to 783s. How can I look for some pullback entries? I'd look at kind of like a trend line breakdown. So it was in this kind of like little pattern. You got a nice little uh, push above. And today, of course, you broke on a little pullback and got that. So I would look for maybe pullbacks right back towards those levels around, let's say, 750 for the next entry for the nice little push towards 850. Something that I keep on watch. But retail, is that really where I want to be in right now? I think that's what I'd be asking myself. What do you think about Affirm? Yeah, it could squeeze too. This is a classic stock that could squeeze. I've been actually on uh, record saying that Affirm would probably be the disaster stock of this bear market that we were in. And it really hasn't turned out to be that. I thought by now it would be already destroyed and probably a zero. The truth is it's turned around. And now this is that type of stock they could squeeze higher, but also could still disappear in the long run. So I would say that I would maybe rent it. I would look to maybe play it on day trading action, at least myself. But other than that, I'm not keeping this for long term, but I don't mind maybe playing it because you can see how it's kind of just stair stepping its way higher, not taking much pullback. And now it's kind of a stair, like kind of pushing towards making a new support around the 1530s. So pullbacks maybe around 1525, 1530s. I'd be looking for that to hold for sure 15 and then start really getting going. And you also got the 200 moving average. You got a gap to close here. Has it closed that gap? It might have just closed that gap right now today. So let's see here. Yeah, it's close to 1596. So that's like 1588. Let me see the low here. 1595 is that official close. So it could be trying to fill a little bit of a gap. And then let's see if it pushes towards 22. Not a bad one I'd keep on uh, my radar, especially if we're going to just keep pushing higher. That's the one thing that we always got to keep in mind. If the stocks want to keep pushing higher, the SPY, the Qs, and just keep just banging towards the upside, yeah, we're going to get a lot of these stocks to make a, a follow-through move. Uh, Micron, now off the 9 EMA. This is interesting. If we could have a nice little bullish day for tech, I could see this pushing right back to 74. So I'm going to keep this on one on my radar um, to see if it can really kind of take off multiple days lows around the same area, 79, uh, 67, 92, 68, 10, and 68, 30s. 
6829. So right around that 6830 to like 68, that's kind of the area where I see support holding right now. Let's see if it makes the next move in on like kind of Monday or Tuesday on this little kind of break towards back towards like this upside move towards 72. I like the risk to reward there in my con. All right, let me keep going. I'm a Red Bull generation. I have no idea what that is. I still drink Red Bulls. I, I like Red Bulls too, but I, 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 you know, I change it up sometimes. I don't drink them all the time too. I try my best to stay off of them. There's some weeks that we need some more than others. All right, let's keep going. Money Mitch used to be a big gulp. You know it, the big gulp fan, man. Of course. Let's just say I, I, I had a lot of Slurpees, um, a, a lot of taquitos. Uh, I love my taquitos, man. I, I, I can't go back to those. Those are bad for you, though. I used to eat them all the time. All right, let's keep going. May the heat be with me. Oh, thank you, Jay. I appreciate the love, dude. Uh, and that's, that's what it's all about. But it's 4 o'clock, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. Definitely enjoy your weekend. Have a great one. Enjoy it. A little Red Bull and vodka. Why not? Pinky's up. The market's closed. Uh, a little slurpy action, if that's what you like. Maybe a little club mix. Um, I don't know. I, I used to be in my club days, you know, my Miami days. Money Mitch in Miami. Swag. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you'll see me one day out there at our cannabis conference. Smash it up, team. We'll see you guys, of course, on Sunday in the book club. Who's going to be there on the book club? We're actually going to do it on Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Don't miss that, guys. I'm throwing up the link right now. If you haven't joined the book club, you should definitely do so. I'll see you next time. Keep battling. And looks like, hmm, I got my first Moo Moo swing trade on. Hmm. Let's find out what happens, right? We'll see. I got, I got MP. I stuck in it. I didn't get out. The order never got there. So I'll cancel that now. Canceled that order. Never filled there. Never pulled back. It actually came up towards 2207. So I'm going to hold on to that one. We'll find out what happens on Monday. Smash the like. I'll see you guys next week. And stay safe out there. It's always crazy on the weekends.